Hey friends, welcome to part two of class four, intro to 22.5, uh, crease pattern solving. And today we are going to be looking at this crease pattern. This is the Chibi Lizard by Mark Thompson, as I showed in the last part. And we're going to take a look at how to pre-crease this model um, in this part. So what can we kind of pick out from this crease pattern that we can pre-crease easily with no reference points? And unfortunately for this design, the only real um, fold we can do is this valley fold all the way through the middle. Um, as you can see, the crease pattern. And if you're wondering if it's color side up or color side down, this one is color side up. Um, you can tell if you put together pieces, but don't worry about that. If you don't have a huge understanding, sometimes you just have to guess a little bit and you'll start to understand. For me, I could tell just because this is mountain um, and it matches the flap if you look at a finished model. Um, but yeah, so this is the only real pre-crease we can do. And like I mentioned before, um, 22.5 uh, pre-creasing isn't like box pleat pre-creasing where you collapse or you pre-crease everything and then you go in for the collapse. This one normally has a sequence where the pre-creasing will eventually become part of um, the model. Um, it, it go, it, you pre-crease as you go on, but there are some small pre-crease we have to do. And now from here, uh, how do you know what next to pre-crease? Well, um, what I'm gonna teach you is kind of a little basic to 22.5. If you have no idea what um, reference point things are, the best thing to do is to fold a 22.5 degree angle, hence the name 22.5, you know, designing. Um, and what does that mean? So we have a 45 degree angle here. And if you've taken geometry, you know that well, half 45, right, is 22.5, um, which would be like this. And while, um, what does this really give us? This would actually give us the reference point right here. So you don't wanna fold this whole flap just cause, you know, we don't wanna want extra creases running through the line. But if you mark it off right here, we actually have our reference point for this whole um, mountain fold that'll be folded across here. And again, while the crease pattern doesn't exactly show this mountain fold going all the way down here, we're actually gonna fold it all the way down just cause that's gonna be part of our sequence. And there's just some creases that will be there as we're going on um, to do parts of the collapse that just aren't there in the finished model, but they're still there basically. Um, so yeah, so as you can see, that reference point, which was just to the middle diagonal, forms this. This is a very popular reference point used in 22.5 um, designs, especially for simpler ones, which are just based off, um, you know, basic preliminary bases, kind of as I mentioned before, where there's not a ton of smaller reference points. Um, this is a really easy one to kind of look for and really easy to do. So again, with whenever you're starting off with a 22.5 design, try folding some of these 22.5 angles with different reference points and see um, if you can find out the reference point. And even if you're not 100% sure, it's always a good guess. Um, great. So now we have this whole line and that gives us a lot more reference points. So we have this line, which now, since there's an intersection here, it'll give us the following crease as well. So you just line that up, make sure you're precise and go for it. Just like that. And as you can see, um, we're starting to build up more and more creases uh, for us to use, and this will give us even more and more reference points. So now we have this, which appears to be half of um, this unit. So fold this in half. And again, I'm just gonna go all the way through just cause that is um, part of the sequence. 
And um, if you're guessing on what to do, it's never like too terrible to fold all the way through if you can kind of guess structures. Um, as I mentioned in the previous part, watch that. You can see we have these bird bases, so I know it's totally fine to go all the way through. However, if you want to preserve like this part, then that's okay. But as you can see from here, it only leaves a little crease on top, which, you know, you can fold the second one and get rid of that if you need to. But if you're just starting off trying to learn how to solve these, totally fine to go all the way through. All right, so now we have these creases all pre-creased. Now, what other um, creases will that give us? Well, first off, we have this one now. And this one we can choose to not crease all the way. Um, just because there's nothing else that will be there for us to do. So we just pre-crease to the lines we had already, like this. And we can do the same thing for this front one up here, which will just be essentially half of that. Just like this. Right? And now what else do we have? Now that we have two these two intersecting points, we can fold the reference point off that, which also uses this line right here um, as a reference as well. So you have a ton of references now to start getting these creases. And as you can see, just with these few amount of creases, we're almost there um, in terms of pre-creasing. So we kind of have already the outlines for any base we need to get these um, bird bases, which I'll show soon. Um, these little parts here, we don't need to pre-crease these. You might be wondering why. Um, it's going to happen later on, as well as this. Um, and this is kind of an intuition thing. Um, you can't. You could pre-crease it, it wouldn't hurt to. But um, this whole unit here is another very common pattern where you have a bird base and some 22.5 degree units and it like I guess it doesn't really shift down but there's a half unit below that um, with some diagonals and it's it, it yeah it, it once you recognize um, this kind of pattern then it becomes easier to identify um, it's very similar to how in my generic dragon how this kind of works how these turn into this but like this is a hinge basically um, but yeah, you don't have to worry about that too much. Just keep following along and hopefully this will kind of make sense as the progress goes on. Um, and yeah, basically the last thing we're going to pre-crease are these 22.5 degree lines here. And you might see that this is just a rabbit ear. Um, so we can do that now if we want to. We don't really have to, but since there's nothing else interrupting it, we're going to go ahead and do this rabbit ear. Right, so the rabbit ear would be like this. And we're gonna use that later for the rest of our design, but for now we're just going to unfold it. And this is all the like individual lines um, you really need to do. Um, I'm just going to do one more, which is this line all the way across here. Um, and then we'll get going into that those bird bases. Just like that. But yeah, as you can see, the pre-creasing for 22.5 is significantly less um, than what's shown on the crease pattern. And oftentimes that really is the case. Um, like I said, you don't have to, um, you know, brute force anything. Um, a lot of it will come during the sequence as you identify the bases you need to fold. Um, so yeah, let's do these now. So, let's get these bases done. Um, these bird bases are basically the only thing not pre-creased, as well as these little triangle units here. Um, and then also you might notice these reverse folds aren't, but as you can tell, I said reverse fold, which means um, I'm going to do one on here just to show you. but. Once this is fully collapsed like this guy, I shall just show in here, right? This reverse fold will happen very naturally just by, um, you know, you can pre-crease here and reverse fold like that. 
Um, so that's what we're gonna do once the rest of it's done, just to keep things simple. Um, leave, we'll leave that out of the way. All right, so now how do we approach these bird bases? So if you did the exercise, like I told y'all to in the last part, um, this should be very familiar. Um, so to access this middle part, just like we did with the other one, let me grab that example right here, where we got the middle part by folding up and folding across like this. So that way we could squash fold it and do all that fun stuff. We can get the same thing um, by folding. As you can see, the units are here and here. You fold up along this valley, and that's basically this half unit right here. Um, and then if you fold mountain along this one, you can notice that it also goes through the middle here along the diagonals. And then we have our triangle right here. I'm not sure if you can see the creases, uh, but there's a crease. I'm just gonna make it a little stronger. Right here, that forms our triangle. That is just the same as our triangle when we do this, right? Um, so we can do the same sequence for it. And just for review, in case you missed part one or you didn't wanna do the exercises, is you squash fold like this. And then you um, pedal fold. And again, you can pre-crease this if you want to, but um, I tend to not use the pre-crease. I can eyeball it very precisely. If you can't eyeball it very precisely, um, then yeah, by all means, pre-crease it uh, just so that you keep the model precise and clean. Uh, but if you've done these a million times, then you can kind of know the nuances on how to get it just as clean without pre-creasing. So just like that and crease these down pretty well. And we have our um, pre-creases for the bird base. And we're not gonna collapse the bird base yet because we need to do the other one. But yeah, that's how you would pre-crease a unit like that. And as you can see, we have it lined up just like so. Now you, if you've done any like complex diagrams um, for models or any sorts of that, then you've actually probably done this without realizing it in the past. Could have been done with a different sequence. Um, but even though we're doing crease patterns, that kind of, uh, it, we, that sequence is a tool for us to use um, as we're going on into solving just it from the crease pattern. Um, we can just think of it like a diagram. Um, so definitely use things you've learned and experienced um, with the past to help you out with these uh, crease patterns as you're starting to learn them. Um, but yeah, so go ahead, do the other side. I'm gonna do that really quick and we'll come right back. All right, so we are back with the second bird base pre-creased. Um, so hold on, hopefully you got that done. And now really the only thing we need to do, uh, which again, is fairly optional. Um, if you wanna do this later, we're just going to pre-crease this reverse fold. Um, as you can see, it's just up to this line like this. And obviously when we actually do the reverse fold, it would be like this, um, which we don't really have to pre-crease that. But if you want to, so that it looks like the crease pattern, uh, maybe this will help you collapse it. And in this scenario, um, it won't really do much um, during the collapse because the hardest part of this collapse will be those bird bases. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much it. Obviously we're still missing those two triangles, but those will happen with the collapse, which we'll show in the next part. Um, so yeah, that's all the pre-creasing there is to this model. It's pretty fast. Um, this is a great design. And once again, thank you to Mark Thompson for giving me permission to use this model for um, the class today. And um, we're going to get into the collapse in the next part. And uh, the last thing I wanna leave you guys with at least for understanding how to pre-crease 22.5 designs. Um, say you're going for a different one like this, how to start off. Really utilize um, finding those 22.5 degree angles. 
um, utilize the bird bases, uh, utilize different reference points, and try, it's almost like a puzzle uh, for pre-creasing as you solve. You pick out all the reference points you can, you see the ones you need, the ones you don't need, um, and you go from there. Um, so just quickly, like as an exercise, um, find this crease pattern. This is on my Flickr. Um, you know, if you fold, actually, I, I at one point I did normally do that um, diagonal reference point for this, um, but in this case it's thirds. But right, we have our bird base here. Um, this is just a half mark. Uh, once we have that, you see like, oh, uh, what reference is this? You find that by um, looking like, oh, this is like thirds. Um, even right here, this is a third. Uh, actually, the, this isn't, but this one's a third of the sheet. Once you have the third, then all the other horizontal lines make sense. Then you get these ones and these and, and on and so forth. So that's just how you start looking for um, all the different reference points. Um, all these lines, the horizontal lines become easy as you fold the sequence. Um, but yeah, try that out. Pick some crease patterns. Mine's not best for doing this. This one's really good for trying to learn how to identify them. But yeah, just try looking for those. Um, and we'll see you in the collapse video in the next part. Thanks for watching and yeah. All this origami, all this origami. All this origami got